One that looks worse for Donald Trump may get the least attention, partly because several leaks today could overshadow it, and partly because it's a nuanced story about the rule of law in the FBI. That story is Donald Trump versus the FBI director. In this case, both of them. Late today, NBC News reporting Mueller has interviewed former FBI director Comey, focusing on if Trump interfered in the Flynn investigation, which Comey says he documented in real time in those memos. He kept them because he said he thought Trump might lie. I was honestly concerned that he might lie about the nature of our meeting, and so I thought it really important to document. Trump firing Comey is at the heart of everything. It led to Mueller's appointment. It remains under investigation. And the reason tonight's news is this battle with two FBI directors is because of what I was just discussing before the break. Axios reporting that Trump kept meddling at the FBI even after the Comey debacle, attempting another partisan purge so over the line his own replacement for Comey threatened to resign. Three sources telling Axios Trump was improperly demanding the new FBI director fire Deputy Director Andrew McCabe. It got so heated that Ray threatened to resign over it and that Trump's White House lawyer said it was not worth losing another FBI director over Trump's desire to get McCabe fired. This is an explosive account. It matches Donald Trump's own public attacks on McCabe, a 22-year FBI veteran who Trump has criticized for legal activities like being married to a Democrat. And while Trump denied today that Ray threatened to resign, the White House put out this unusual statement confirming basically aspects of this story. It says Trump believes that FBI leadership is politically motivated, including those who Comey empowered and have alleged, allegedly tainted the agency's reputation. It's not hard to connect these dots because there are two of them. Jim Comey empowered McCabe by giving him the number two job at the FBI in 2016. Trump is saying that link to Comey makes McCabe suspect. So the, while, while the White House here is basically leaning into this report, they are attempting, according to their statement, a kind of a purge of the FBI in broad daylight and getting this resignation threat from their own FBI director and showing the president's not backing off despite this blowback. Axios reports, quote, this much meddling with the FBI for this long is not normal. No, it's not. Investigators are probing whether it's even legal. I'm joined by The Washington Post's Devlin Barrett, reporting on a lot of the turmoil related to this story, a law professor and former legal advisor to President George W. Bush in the Department of Justice, Jamil Jaffer, and former U.S. Attorney Karen uh, Leffler. Uh, Devlin, having been all over this story and there being several aspects late breaking tonight, uh, your view on the White House's unusual statement uh, about people that Comey empowered being political. Yeah, it's really an amazing situation because you've got you've got a dynamic where they're basically denying the notion that they would, you know, engage in something too crass and at the same time basically confirming the the entire premise of this of this conflict, which is that they want a bunch of people moved out of their jobs at senior positions in the FBI. It, it's it's a very it's a very tense thing and, and it shows you frankly how far apart that the White House and the FBI and the DOJ are are all from each other and that in itself is a very unusual circumstance. Jamil, can a president appropriately remove FBI officials because of their political views? Well, look, the president certainly can remove the FBI director for any reason not or the FBI leadership. You, not what I asked you. Yeah. Go ahead and answer the question. Well, look, I, I, for their political views, absolutely not. You can't remove okay. people for their political views. That's not appropriate. Right. Um, and, and this report, which they're not fully denying, I just want to be clear because it's so important. The FBI deputy director, who is appointed by the FBI director, that, that is the, the chain there. And you as a, a person who cares about the, the process and the law here, that the report on its face seems to be concerning. Yeah, look, it's also obviously very troubling. Um, and the concern here is, you know, the president already fired one FBI director. And what we saw was the appointment of a special prosecutor that he doesn't like. So, you know, it's, it doesn't make sense to continue down this road. I mean, you know, in some ways, the president's his own worst enemy when it comes to these issues, um, you know, getting into these troubles. And so, you know, the better play here is let Bob Mueller do his investigation. It's going to be what it is. And the results will come out when they do. In the meantime, the president should focus on his agenda, tax cuts, you know, regulatory reform and the like, instead of getting in the middle of this back and forth, which has not worked for him thus far. Karen, your view of this account of Chris Ray basically saying this was something he was willing to resign over. 
Well, I think it's a view representing exactly what the FBI does stand for, which is, um, I mean, dir uh, former Director Comey, uh, Mr. Ray, they're saying, you know, we stand, we take the oath to of loyalty. It's to the Constitution. It's to the country. And I think that if you're the head of an agency and you're asked to do something that's wrong, then you have an obligation, having taken the head, saying, no, I'm going to resign because this goes over the line of what's ethical and appropriate. And um, the view of the executive and the president seems to be, I expect everybody to be part of a cult of personality. And we don't do that in this country. And I would, I mean, I, good for Director Ray, but I would expect the director of the FBI to have that type of integrity and stand up mm. for the rule of law. Well, and it is interesting hearing uh, a widespread support for what is in this account that he did, as you say, stand up, and that's what he should do. Uh, there's so much here. I want to turn to another aspect of this story with Sessions and Deputy Attorney General uh, Rod Rosenstein, who oversees Mueller, because of all the interview news tonight. Now, when Sessions recused himself, Rosenstein tapped Mueller to lead the investigation. I was joining at the time my colleague, Rachel Maddow, and we were discussing the fact that Rosenstein was very likely a witness to the Comey firing, so he might also have to recuse. Oh, if there, so if, I'm sorry to interrupt you there with my exclamation of surprise, but you're saying that if Mueller's investigating Trump for potential obstruction of justice in his firing of Comey, if Rosenstein reasonably should be expected to be called as a witness for that part of the investigation, he can't oversee the Mueller investigation at all. That was our point, and after that, we learned the special counsel interviewed Rosenstein weeks after appointing Mueller. The question is whether that is any kind of possible conflict, given that Rosenstein, as you see right there, was on that now infamous memo claiming that they were firing Karen, they were firing Comey over his handling of the Clinton email case. Donald Trump famously uh, eradicated that defense uh, by saying Russia was on his mind in his Lester Holt interview. Uh, and so, Karen, when you look at people like Sessions and Rosenstein being witnesses uh, to some of this conduct. How do you analyze the work Mueller's doing now that we've learned he just interviewed Sessions last week uh, and that Rosenstein has also provided uh, this information? Well, I mean, if you're asking if there, there's a potential conflict of interest, um, I mean, there could be. I know that, if I recall, Mr. Uh, Rod Rosenstein, who, of course, I know because we were U.S. attorneys together, but um, I think he told Congress when he was interviewed that if the issue came up and it met the ethics rules, that he would follow the ethics rules. Um, and I do think that it happened. I mean, could it potentially happen? Yes. Um, I don't know that whether we're there yet. Um, for Mr. Sessions, um, I mean, he was in on these meetings, and um, I mean, he was really required to recuse himself under the ethics rules of the Department of Justice. At the time that ethics rules were still in existence, when they seemed to have, you know, a strong ethics department, I'm sure Mr. Rosenstein was getting advice on that. I don't know where we are hmm. now. I mean, the facts of the case could turn to that. Um, I'm not sure where we are now, but I do know that, I do recall, if I'm right, that when he testified to Congress, Mr. Rosenstein, uh, Mr. Rosenstein said that he would um, follow those rules. And Jamil, listen to Jim Comey's public assessment, which we now know he has given to Mueller, that's new tonight, uh, about why he was fired. Why do you believe you were fired? I guess I don't know for sure. I believe the pre I take the president at his word that I was fired because of the Russia investigation. It's my judgment that I was fired because of the Russia investigation. I was fired in some way to change, or the endeavor was to change the way the Russia investigation was being conducted. That is a that is a very big deal. Uh, Jamil, how does that view that testimony come up uh, in the way Mueller is interviewing Comey? Yeah, well, look, I mean, if if Mueller's concerned that Comey was fired because of the Russia investigation, that, you know, is very problematic. And that's clearly going to be the basis for some investigation by Mueller. We always knew that was going to be the case. The president had to know that going in. And look, the president has legitimate reason to be upset and concerned with the FBI. These texts between Strzok and Page are very troubling, uh, very political and concerning. At the same time, look, I, I don't think he's getting the results he wants, right? Firing the FBI director led to the appointment of a special prosecutor. It's now led to potential obstruction analysis. That's a problem, you know, and, and nobody wants that. And, uh, and it's not beneficial to the president's agenda. And so 
sort of getting in the middle of this whole Ray McCabe thing, again, not, not beneficial. The tweets, they're not helping move the ball down the road. And if the president's goal is to get his agenda moving, right. then what he ought to do is stop tweeting, stop trying to get in the middle of the FBI's investigation, and just let Bob Mueller, who's a professional, as is Rod Rosenstein, as is Jeff Sessions, as is Rachel Brand, and as is Andrew McCabe, and let them just do their jobs. And Devlin, final question to you. It might be hard or easy, probably a short answer. Any idea why so much on this story is breaking right now? I just think that things are heating up, and I think things are intensifying. I think a, an interview of Jeff Sessions shows you that they are really in the inner circle now, and they are really looking hard at, at, at senior officials in government. And, you know, I, I, think, I think it's going to get busier. And, you know, we reported tonight that, you know, they're talking about a Trump interview in a matter of weeks. I just think yeah. it's going to be an intense time period.